Hello you guys, so today I will be giving you a presentation on Jane Eyre, so we will be discussing many things such as Jane Eyre, so I will be introducing her, her, the character traits she has and I will be giving you examples and her relationships with everyone and how does everyone have a relationship to her and the phases of her life because she has five phases. Then we have Edward Rochester, which is Mr. Rochester. We will be introducing him and I'll be giving you like a summary on everything that happened throughout his life, the relationships he has and the life he has led. Sanjin also, I'll be introducing him, his character traits, his relationship and you can, you know, his life phases too. And then Jane and Rochester's dynamic, you know, what they bring out in each other, how they treated each other, what they have gone through. And then Jane and Sanjin too, how, you know, Sanjin always had that influence over Jane. Mr. Rochester and Sanjin, you know, these, the analysis between them. And then the themes in the novel, such as class discrimination, family, gender discrimination, love, the Victorian era, foreshadowing and figurative language, author style, like, you know, the gothic, um, the, you know, actually not the, you know, gothic atmosphere of Thornfield. And then the symbols, lots of symbols and also foreshadowing. And then you have golden lines and all the golden lines correspond to the themes. So let us begin. Jane Eyre. So Jane Eyre is the main character of the novel. She's in every chapter and we know everything about her. And she's the protagonist. Throughout the novel, she faces many hardships and learns many lessons. And we learn these lessons with her. So her character traits. So basically, Jane's an adventurous person because, you know, she always longed for adventure. She always wanted to do something new. For example, when she was tired of being, you know, a teacher at Lowood, she longed for something new, and that's when she became a governess at Thornfield. Then courageous, Jane always had that courage, especially for a female in the Victorian era. Jane always, you know, stood up for herself. For example, in chapter four, where she stood up for herself to her auntie, Mrs. Reed, or when she left Thornfield all alone after, you know, her, what happened, what occurred. And then she is determined because whenever she wanted something, she would go for it. For example, she knew that the right decision was to leave Thornfield, so she left Thornfield. And she knew the right decision was not marrying Sanjay, so she was determined to not marry Sanjay. And then hardworking. Jane's always been this hardworking person since day one. Um, ever since she was a student, she was the top of her class. She worked her hardest. She achieved her best as a governess. She put her, you know, full effort with Adele. And as a mistress too, she always tried the best with her students. She's honest always, especially you remember when Rochester thought uh, asked her if she thought he was handsome and she said no. And also that has to do with her impulsiveness. You know, she constantly answered before thinking. When Mr. Rochester asked her if she thinks he's handsome, before thinking or saying anything, she said no. She's rebellious. Despite being this girl with very strong morals, Jane always had that, you know, tide of rebelliousness that rebellious is you know a rebelliousness you know we first saw it when she answered mrs reed and you also saw it when you know she always wanted you know to do something that was not allowed to be done and that's always you know something jane had done she's strong-willed very strong-willed and she's talkative she talks a lot her relationships so adele was her student but later she became her step uh, daughter Blanche, they had a bad relationship and they were foil characters. That means they bought the good and bad out of each other, you know. But mostly, you know, Blanche's bad uh, behavior or attitude, we can say, uh, brought out the good in Jane. Bessie, they had a good relationship. Bessie was her servant and her caregiver. Diana, they were good. They were cousins. They were really close. Eliza, they're okay, you know. She's her cousin. Ellen Burns, they had a great relationship and they were really close friends. They were all they had at Lowood, they they all they only had each other, honestly. Georgiana, they were good, they were okay, they were cousins. Grace Poole, it was bad, and she was her former colleague. She was the seamstress at Lowood, but turns out she was Bertha Mason's caregiver, or maybe we can say supervisor. John Reed, it was bad, and he was her cousin and buddy. Mary, it was good, and they were cousins. Miss Temple, it was great, she was her teacher, and she was kind of a motherly figure to Jane. Mr. Bucklehurst, bad. He was the supervisor at Lowood, very corrupt and bad man. Mr. Lowood, he was good. He was the family apothecary and he was the one who suggested Jane go to Lowood. Mr. Rochester, he was great and he was her husband, the love of her life, her equal, her soulmate. Mr. Mrs. Fairfax, actually, sorry. Uh, good, her former colleague. Mrs. Reed, bad, her step-aunt. And Sanjin, okay, her cousin. 
then you know, the little summary. So Jane goes through five phases in her life. The first 10 years of life at Gateshead, living with her step-aunt and cousins. The next nine years at Lowood, where she excels in her studies and teaches there for two years. The third phase was at Thornfield, working as a governess. The third phase was teaching in, the, in a girls' charity school at Morton. The fifth phase, which we did not see much of, was her marriage, her, much was her life with Mr. Rochester after their marriage. Let us go to Mr. Rochester. Um, Edward Rochester, referred to as Mr. Rochester in the novel, is one of the main characters in the Byronic Hero. So who the Byronic Hero is, actually, is he's the, like, the love interest of the protagonist or the main character. So character traits. So he is arrogant and he is guilty because, you know, he committed many sins. He's kind. He, he, Jane constantly said that he has this great kindness about him, this great kindness. And he was very moody, you know, sometimes he would, you know, bite his lips towards Jane, but sometimes he was so cold. And he was very mysterious, you know, the way he acted, like I said, he would bite his lips, but then he would change, you know, it, it was mysterious. He, he, you know, not much was uncovered about him. He was passionate, though he had this deep, passionate love for Jane. He was sardonic and he was very witty, I always had that wit about him. Relationships, so Adele, good, she was his warden, his warden means his, you know, not his daughter, but he's in charge of her, he's taking care of her, so not his biological daughter, maybe. <clears throat> Blanche, it was uh, bad, she was his ex fiance. it did not end well. Um, Bertha, it was bad, and she is his ex-wife, um, they never got along, they could never stand each other. Celine Varens, they had, you know, she was his previous fling, but they don't talk anymore, so it's non-existent. Jane Great, he's her husband. Mr. Mason, his ex-brother-in-law. Yet they were kind of friends, and the relationship's fine. And Mrs. Fairfax, good, and she is his housekeeper. Um. So now his little summary of his life. So throughout the novel, we learn about Mr. Rochester's past. Mr. Rochester's past. He faced many challenges and committed many sins that are against religion. He had a father who gave everything to his older brother and made him marry a woman named Bertha Mason. Later, he finds out that she is mad. At the age of 26, he, get he gets depressed and attempts to take his own life. Then he be begins traveling around Europe and having affairs. One of his flings has a child and gives, uh, and gives it to him. He falls for, for his warden's governess and makes her his mistress. After she finds out about his marriage and leaves... Um, he has an accident and loses his eyesight and his hand. His wife dies after throwing him herself off the roof. In the end, he marries his warden's governess, Jane. They have a son and he gains a, a, some of his eyesight. So basically, um, all of these things happen in his life. So, you know, despite being this, arist this aristocratic man, you know, he, he went through a lot. It wasn't easy. And he had, you know, he didn't have a very good family, but then Jane became his family. <clears throat> Sanjin. Sanjin was a clear clergyman living in Morton. When Jane needed help, he welcomed her into his home and found her a job. Later, we found out that he's Jane's cousin. And so his character traits, he's ambitious, you know, he always, you know, he always had these aspirations that he wanted to do, like becoming a missionary. He was cold, or he had this coldness about him. He was very distant, you know, when Jane would sit with his sisters and they would conversate, he would just, you know, stay quiet, not talk much. Or when Jane was lying in bed sleeping, um, he, he just went, he saw her, but he didn't really say anything. Um, he's intimidating. I always used, you know, this religious side of him to intimidate Jane and get him, get her to do things for him. He was religious. He, he, he believed in religion a lot. And it was a very strong, you know, thing in his life. He was strategic. He always planned things. Like, for example, when he told Jane to learn Hindustani, he planned it. Like, he wanted her to learn Hindustani so she, she can travel with him to India. His relationship, Diana, she, it's good. She's his sister. Hannah, good. She's the housekeeper of the rivers. Jane, okay, his cousin. It was better, but then when Jane refused his proposal, he, he was not very fond of her. John Eyre, bad. His uncle, John Eyre, and the rivers, you know, they kind of have this friction. Mary Good, uh, she's his sister, Rosamond Good, and she was his crush, and they did have romantic feelings towards each other, but uh, Sanjin did not think she would be fit for a wife. 
Sanjin is the foil character of the fiery and passionate Mr. Rochester. Sanjin is a very ambitious man. He sacrificed everything in his life, including his love for Rosamond, just to become a missionary. He wanted to marry his cousin Jane because he believed that she was very she was a fit she was fit to become a wife of a missionary. After Jane refused, Sanjin went to India alone to become a missionary. He lived the rest of his life there and never got married. So he stayed single and he never really got into a relationship. Maybe because of his coldness, we don't know. Jane and Rochester dynamic. So while working as a governess, Jane begins to fall in love with her master. Jane confesses that she is in love with him and he proposes, but they face many difficulties such as their difference in social class and age. Um, on their wedding day, Jane finds out that Mr. Rochester is married and she leaves. She becomes wealthy after inheriting her uncle's fortune. She decides to visit Rochester and finds out that Thornfield has burned down. She visits him in Fern Dean and Mr. Rochester proposes again. They get married and have a son. And now we have the more important part which I'm going to read. Before Jane, Rochester had many flings. He was not a family man because he was constantly traveling. Jane tamed him and made him a better man. So she brought out the good in him, the better side. Jane brings out the warm and talkative side of Rochester. Rochester makes Jane happy and makes her feel loved. They complete each other. And something I did not write, but I will be mentioning of course, is that Jane and Rochester, especially Jane, Jane had these internal conflicts where she wouldn't really feel like she's an equal to Mr. Rochester and that would let her down. And not only that would let her down, that would scare her. But after she inherited that money from her uncle and of course, you know, became important at Morton, she finally felt like she was equal to Mr. Rochester. She finally felt like she was enough for him. And that's when, you know, they were finally balanced and they finally, you know, could, you know, unite and get married. And of course, Bertha Mason's death was, you know, the the thing that, you know, made, made it easier for them to get married because before they couldn't get married because he was already with Bertha. But once Bertha was dead, everything, you know, went to place. Sanjin and Jane's relationship. In the beginning, Sanjin was very cold and distant towards Jane. When Jane begins working as a mistress, he begins visiting her. One day they find out they are cousins, but that does not stop Sanjin from asking her to go with him uh, to India and proposing to her. He wanted to marry Jane because he thought that she would make a good wife for a missionary. The relationship they have is based on responsibility, so there was never, you know, love and emotion. And like Mr. Rochester and Jane's relationship, they, they also have that fire relationship, this passionate relationship. They always, you know, kissed each other and told each other they love each other. But with Sanjin, no, it was just based on responsibility. Sanjin intimidates and pressures Jane to do what he wants. He uses religion as a way to influence Jane. Jane is always trying to please him, but the minute she does not, he becomes distant. That shows that the relationship is toxic. So basically, with, with Jane and Sanjin, the relationship is Jane has to constantly give and give and give. And if he does not receive, he will change and he will become this cold, distant person. And he would like really make her feel you know, bad and like she, she isn't you know, worthy. Sanjin brings out the responsible and religious Jane. After he refuses uh, him, Jane brings out the manipulative Sanjin. So basically, when Jane finally you know, gets the confidence to stand up for herself and tell him no, or actually not tell him no, she would be friendly, but if she just wouldn't do what he wanted, he would completely change, which makes the relationship toxic. Mr. Rochester and Sanjin. Mr. Rochester is a very important person for Jane. He is loving and caring towards Jane and he truly loves her. Despite everything, he always had that love for her. Even when he, when he, um, you know, he was married, but when he apologized, Jane even saw the sincerity in his eyes. Um, and Jane feels comfortable and happy when Rochester is at her side, but she is afraid of getting married to him. Rochester likes having conversations with Jane, and he talks to her deeply and, and about love and life. Yeah, he constantly would tell her about, you know, guilt is the poison of life, and we would always open these very deep conversations together. Moreover, Rochester has committed many sins and has made many mistakes. Rochester is, a pas is passionate towards Jane and he wants to make her live in a fairy tale. You know, he, he constantly told her, you know, he called his banker, he wants to get her a dozen of dresses, jewels, make her travel all around Europe. You know, he always wants the best for her. He keeps on traveling most of the time and stays away from Thornfield. But when Jane came, he stayed most of the time at Thornfield with her. He presents fire for, for he makes Jane happy. And all, Jane also said that, you know, he, he lights up the room. You know, his, his presence just light up, lights up the room. And excited unlike Sanjin. Sanjin, caring and welcoming, saved, saved Jane's life by welcoming her in his home. But he is cold and distant. Sanjin doesn't like having much conversations. Unlike Mr. Rochester and Jane, they had many conversations about many deep things. 
with people. He sacrifices his entire life for God and makes Jane more religious. Jane at his side is hardworking and serious, but she doesn't love him. So Jane, when his side, you know, she was very hardworking, but she wasn't happy. She wasn't this content person who was radiant and content. She was, you know, this hardworking person and there was really no love. It was just responsibility. And their interaction was very cold. Sanjin provides Jane with a job so that she can earn some money. He treats her with he treats her with no feelings and wants to marry her so that she can take care of him. He doesn't have any feelings of love towards Jane and tells her to go to India with him to help him. He made Jane a solitary and responsible girl by keeping her alone in a small home in the school she was running. So basically, Sanjin wants Jane to be in this specific way or else she, she is no longer, you know, good for him. You know, he just wanted her to take care of him, do her responsibilities, and that's all he wanted. He doesn't want the relationship, the love, you know, things marriage usually have, marriages have, but he didn't want that. But Mr. Rochester was the complete opposite, as you can see in these two images. Jane and Rochester, they were having this fiery passion, they were smiling at each other. Sanjin and Jane, they were hugging, but you can see, you can even feel from the image, you know, the atmosphere of the relationship. Themes. So we have five themes. Family, class discrimination, gender discrimination, and dependence. And, you know, we have a few images here and there. We have the love of Jane Rochester. We have, you know, the rest of them. You know, family, we see Diana and Mary. Here's Diana and Mary. And then we have the gender discrimination. Oh, no, that's actually the, I'm sorry, the class discrimination. This is the gender discrimination. And this is just the independence of Jane, you know, her as a governess. Class discrimination. So as an orphan, a governess and the wife of an aristocratic man, Jane has had a liquid social class, which I, has, I have said in my previous videos. And um, she interacted with people from every social class, from servants like Bessie to aristocratic people like aristocratic people like Mr. Rochester. As a poor orphan with nothing, Jane faced a great deal of criticism from many people, such as Mr. Brocklehurst, such as one of the servants at uh, um, uh, Gateshead. Um, her name is Mr. Bot. You know, many people. Her cousins would not play with her because of her social class. John the bully would use the fact that she's an orphan who had nothing against her, you know, once he told her, you're an orphan without anything, you know. As a governess, Jane had, had a lot of pride since she was promoted to the middle class, you know. Being a governess was, you know, one of the only legitimate ways to make money for a woman. And, you know, it was a post that showed that you're an educated person, so Jane, you know, was very proud of herself. Yet she received criticism from her master's fiance and her mother. So she faced criticism from Blanche and her mother constantly and she was talked down to. They treated her so cruelly to the point where she ended up leaving in tears. That was when the party had occurred. Class discrimination affected her love life too. Her love life. When Jane fell for her master, she couldn't help but feel inadequate compared to Blanche, his previous fiance. Blanche was this aristocratic lady who always, you know, had the most beautiful clothes and she was just very praised. Even Mrs. Fairfax, you know, always thought that Blanche was a better fit than Jane. You know, she always praised Blanche. But when Jane and Mr. Rochester began, you know, a relationship, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Fairfax was not happy. She was not content with it. She felt as if their love was wrong since they came from different social classes. After Jane left and inherited her uncle's fortune, she felt equal to Mr. Rochester. She came back to him, you know, because that social class barrier kept making F Jane feel so bad in the end, like she left, even though it was not the reason she left. But when Jane finally got her fortune, she did come back. That's when she came back. Independence. In, the, in this novel, we encountered the theme of independence multiple times with Jane. She was independent throughout her life, her, her entire journey, from the, moment, from the moment she entered the Lord Institution to the moment she got married. She faced all of her problems alone without any external help. She made really important decisions in her life at a young age by herself. So since day one, Jane has never really had support. She never had parents. She never had anyone to lead her. Even the only person who supported her, Helen Burns, ended up dying. And Miss Temple, but Helen Burns was more of her support system. So that shows that, you know, Jane always did things alone. She left Thornfield alone with 20 shillings. She had nothing and she, she, she went from the bottom and found her way up. Family. Jane spent all of her young life searching for a place where she, she belongs. The harsh mothering of aunt, uh, her aunt, Mrs. Reed, causes Jane to suffer. It causes her a lot of, you know, internally problems. And these problems 
you know, they lasted with her for a long time when she was in the carriage with Mr. Mr. Rochester when they were going to Melcott, I think. Um, you know, she remembered her childhood and she didn't want to go back to her childhood. She said that twice in the novel. She didn't want to go back because growing up at uh, Gatehead and Lowood, they were never good places to grow up in. At Lowood, Miss Temple, Miss Temple is Jane's first positive mother figure, showing love and care. Miss Temple was Jane's first support system. Helen Burns was like Jane's sister because they were both lonely and only had each other. You know, Jane, you know, she had these cousins and aunt which abused her and didn't care about her. And Ellen had that father who abandoned her. At Thornfield, Jane learns to love to love sweet Adele and is kind of a mother to her. Not, a, not exactly a mother, but they do have a very close relationship. And when Mr. Rochester didn't want to take Adele with them to Melcott, Jane insisted she, they do. Mrs. Fairfax was a mo was motherly to Jane and always looked out for her. You know, when Mrs. when uh, Mrs. Fairfax was warning Jane about her relationship with Mr. Rochester, she did warn Jane many times that Mr. Rochester was going to break her heart. At the Moore house, she finally found her real family, her biological family. She felt a sense of belonging with Diana, Mary, and Sanjin, her cousins. Jane repairs the house for uh, for their Christmas reunion with a lot of joy and shares her inheritance of twenty thousand pounds, which she received from her uncle with them. She rejects Sanjay's proposal because it wasn't going to it was going to be a loveless marriage. Finally, Jane returns to Rochester to start a true family. So she starts. So first we see her, you know, her abusive family from her maternal side, the Reeds. Then we see, you know, not her biological family at Lowood. You know, we see. Two people like a sister and the mother, but they weren't her sister and mother, but they they had you know a kind of close relationship to that. Then we go to the Moore house where she finds her real cousins who were actually good to her and they actually had a bond. And then in the end she starts her own family with Mr. Rochester and they have a son. And what she has her stepdaughter Adele. Gender discrimination. Gender discrimination begins in the very beginning of the novel when Jane had a fight with her cousin. John, the servants defended him and threw Jane in the red room. The discrimination continued at Lowood when Mr. Bucklehurst undernourished and overworked the girls. When Jane dropped her slate by mistake, he humiliated her and punished her in front of all of the pupils. Both Rochester and St. John tried to make Jane, um, take Jane in the subordinate, posi subordinate position and prevent her from expressing her thoughts and feelings. Like, for example, um, when Jane wanted to leave Thornfield, you know, leave Mr. Rochester, he kept you know, trying to make her feel guilty, trying to tell her her past as reason to make her stay. Um, but that Jane wouldn't accept that, but he tried to. It was his motive. Rochester pressures her to stay and be his mistress. And being a mistress is a, is a sin, and especially in the Victorian era, it was very, very, very bad and very looked down to. And um, Sanjin pressures her to marry him and go to India with him. When Jane refuses, he becomes distant as if she owes him something. You know, he tries to make her feel that guilt, despite her not committing any mistake. Bertha Mason was an example of the confined wife. Rochester said that she was mad and that she gives him the right to lock her in a room for years. That would never happen to a man and he would ha never have to face that. So basically, um, um, despite Bertha's craziness, even if she was crazy, that does not give Mr. Rochester a reason to lock her in a room for years, you know? That does not give him a reason. If, if he was the one who was mentally ill, I'm sure that would not be happening to him. Love. Throughout the novel, we encountered two kinds of love. Family love and romantic love. Love was really important to Jane. She wanted to love and be loved. She gets in love with Mr. Rochester and says that he is the only one she will ever love. They got separated throughout the story and at the end they marry each other because, you know, they always had that fate. Moreover, they get a child and live happily together. Family and friends a love. Her love to her cousins, Mrs. Fairfax, Adele and Ellen. And her romantic love, her love to Mr. Rochester. And something very important, Jane always said in the novel, she wanted to be loved and love. She wanted that exchange, which she never got. In Victorian era, as a female orphan in the Victorian era, Jane faces a lot of discrimination. She was abused while living with her aunt, overworked and underfed at Lowood. In the Victorian era, the obstacles Jane faced were normalized. Today, an abuser is a criminal. In the Victorian era, there were social classes. Jane being an orphan was the lowest one. Today, there are no social, social classes, but they, are, they, but they are not strongly emphasized. So there are social classes, but you know they're not really emphasized. Working as a governess was one of the only legitimate ways for a woman to make her own money. Today, women can do just about anything. They can get their own educated, education, they can go to college, and you know they, they have their really full rights now. 
not exactly fully right, but it was much better than the Victorian era. There was a huge improvement. Women in the Victorian era had to depend on men and did not have full control on their own lives. That's very true. Um, Mr. Rochester and Sanjan always tried to you know, control Jane's aspects of her life and control everything. Even Mr. Brocklehurst con controlled the girl's life at Lord. Um, religiousness and purity were associated with everything. Today, some people choose not to be religious. So religiousness and sins had like to do with every single thing in your daily life, you know, everything in your life. But now some people don't even want to be religious, you know? Foreshadowing. So Jane's bad dream represents her fear of losing Mr. Rochester when she wakes up and she finds Bertha ripping her veil. The chestnut tree, which is the biggest, you know, one. So the night before their wedding, um, the, there was a, you know, you know, a separate chestnut tree, and that, um, you know, represents the separation of Jane and Rochester. And Jane's torn veil showed that Jane and Mr. Rochester's marriage was not going to happen. And then, actually, no, that's it. Figurative language, metaphor, my first quarter at Lowood seemed an age, and not the golden age either. Either, And simile, hold her arms about that. She's like, in ma she's like a mad cat. So similes are like if you use like or as because you'll be comparing two things. Imagery. The room was chill because it was seldom uh, had a fire. It was silent because remote from the nursery and kitchen. Solemn because it was known to be seldom entered. So basically, this was just, you know, you know, describing what was happening at the moment. Author style. The author style in the novel is gothic and dramatic. The gothic elements are supernatural encounters, remote locations, complicated family histories, the madness, ancient manor houses, dark secrets, and mystery, 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 mysteries to create an atmosphere of suspense and terror. There are many romantic elements such as friendship, relationships, and family. So <clears throat> the gothic elements are supernatural encounters like when Bertha rips Jane's veil out of nowhere, or the remote location in Lowood, which is like very far, the complicated family histories like Mr. Rochester's family history, or even Jane's family history, you know, her mom, Jane, uh, Jane Reed, and her father, um, what's, what's her father's name? We don't know her father's name, but we have his, his family name's here, that's all we know. And then, and the ancient manor house, the dark secrets like Bertha Mason up there, and the mystery is to create an atmosphere of suspense and terror. You know, the mystery, like, for example, when Mr. Mason was stabbed. There are many romantic elements, such as friendships, you know, Jane and Ellen, or actually friendships at Thornfield, like Mrs. Fairfax and Jane. Relationships, like hers and Mr. Rochester, and family. Symbols. The Red Room symbolizes imprisonment and exile, and imprisonment and exile happens when you commit a sin or, you know, you do a mistake. You make a mistake, actually, not do. And that's, you know, Jane in the in the red room, a photo. Fire, it's passion, destruction, which has to do with Mr. Rochester. Ice, coldness, and ice and Sanjin. So you can see that Sanjin and just um, Mr. Rochester are completely different because Mr. Rochester is always this fire place and Sanjin so cold. The eyes, because their eyes are the window of the eyes. Golden lines. So, theme independence, I'm no bird and no net in, in, in snakes me. I'm a free human being with an independent will. So, that shows that, you know, Jane is an independent person and no one can control her. Family, I offer you my hand, my heart, and a share in all of my possessions. I ask you to pass through my life and at my side, to be my second self and, my, and best my early companion. So basically, this shows that, uh, you know, Mr. Rochester was proposing to Jane and, you know, they were being equals, they were being half of each other, which is family. <clears throat> gender discrimination. Women are supposed to be very calm generally, but women feel just as men feel. They need to exercise for their faculties and they feel for their efforts as much as their brothers do. So, you know, gender discrimination, obviously. Love, all my heart is yours, sir. It belongs to you and with it... Uh, with you, it would remain. Were fate to exile the rest of me from your presence forever. Do you think I? So this is for, of course, for love. Jane was telling Mr. Rochester that she loves him. In class discrimination, do you think I'm poor? Uh, that because I'm poor and obscure, plain and little, I'm soulless and heartless. You think wrong. I have soul as much as you, and and fill as much. I, I'm sorry, I can't say that. And and fill as much heart. And if God has gifted me with some beauty and much wealth, 
I should have made you it hard for you to leave me as it's hard for me to leave you. So basically, this is very important, you know, because, you know, it shows how, you know, that, um, you know, these social classes, they determine people's relationships. They determine a lot of things in people's life. And like all of these things, like independence, family, gender discrimination and theme and love and class discrimination, they all had to do with the novel a lot. Like independence, when Jane was all alone as a woman in the Victorian era, or family and how for an orphan how family was and how she found her family gender discrimination you know jane always trying to be an equal to her um you know significant significant other but her facing many obstacles or love with mr rochester or class discrimination from mr rochester blanche and even the reeds so that's it thank you so so much guys for watching and i hope you like this if you have any questions please comment down below bye guys thank you and like and subscribe if you like the video thank you so much guys for watching bye